Welcome back to Everything Whiskey. I'm Callum. And I'm Sam. And today we're trying to something a little bit different. We're trying to podcast. Alrighty. So, uh, basically, we are in lockdown yet again. I think it's number five, of, as we've mentioned before. Well, I mean, everyone um, knows that. We yeah, so, uh, it, so we can't really shoot our regularly formatted stuff in person, um, but we also kind of don't want to do just reviews. So we thought we normally just sit here and chat like most nights about just random stuff, especially whiskey stuff. So why not just turn it into a bit of a podcast formatting? Um, and we'll give this one a go pre-recorded and stuff. Like we're going to record this now and then we'll put it on yeah. uh, YouTube. But uh, if it eventually turns out to be something that people enjoy, um, we will do it as a live thing um, and people can send in questions and stuff like that. Uh, requests because we definitely want it to be <laughs> send like Send in a, questions. You sound like such a s- boomer. Just type in the chat. Send in. Ty- yeah, whatever. <laughs> Leave comments. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> boomer. Boomer. <laughs> You know, whatever. I don't know. I need, Make I it need collaborative. An actual camera if we're doing it live. That's, That's true. How's mine look? Because I can't tell. It always looks good on my end, but I don't know how that. It's goes. just webcams. They do this like zoom in thing when you move. And yeah, it, like, blows. So just don't move. No, oh, yeah. stay still. Um, yeah. So we thought we'd give this one a go. We always chat anyway. So yeah whatever um yeah so let us know how this goes if it's something you want to see more of definitely like ask us stuff give us uh, opinions and recommendations and stuff um because we do want to make this a bit more like kind of interactive with uh, you guys so lockdown kind of thing out of the way um what are our future plans really at the moment they've been the kind of the same for a little bit haven't they <laughs> we haven't really upgraded them at all have we that's what i mean like it's it's still (laughs) just three a week one kind of i don't want to use the term shenanigan because that's just a straight rip off but you know like a more just like just a more chill relax just not a review just something a bit more yeah Um, yeah something that's not a review yeah but two reviews Um, blind tastings and stuff yeah i reckon two reviews a week is good yeah because we're still getting those videos out we just need to make sure we can like find them we're running out of whiskeys to find we're just gonna have to be ordering online like yeah we're just gonna have to start ordering everything from nick's because they're, they're the only ones that have well and Dan, so just anyway yeah. any we're just gonna have to order online we're just not gonna be able to <laughs> keep going into our locals because they're just we've bought them all out we've suckled them just, really. yeah they don't have very good whiskey that's not even a boast about how much we've bought it's like literally they've just got not great whiskey uh supplies to choose from and the ones that they do have yeah. the ones that are decent don't rotate their stuff they don't get new no. stuff in they've just they had a good uh supply so, yeah. a while ago and now it's it's the same supply yeah, they still have the uh, it's a good range but it's the same range um yeah so but also what we've been saying for a while uh is still the same thing it's still in uh in production i guess um is the whole making our own whiskey thing um we have everything don't we well you have everything we just need to buy yeah we've got stuff yeah we need to just buy we've got the equipment we just need to buy like yeah the grains and stuff like that yeah um and some of the like sanitizing stuff like uh i want to buy like instead of using old whiskey bottles uh buy like a you know, pack yeah, a few yeah, boxes yeah, yeah. of like actual like same bottles and stuff mm-hmm. um we'll create our own labels and stuff we obviously won't be able to be selling everything or anything because uh technically over here we got to pay tax on everything we make even if we don't sell it uh eventually the plan is that we will be uh selling we'll get a license and start our own that's a but that's like a whole thing that's going to be happening down the line a bit yeah very much down the line yeah. <laughs> we want to really like test the waters of experimentation um and we still want you guys to be like a collaboration uh in co- collaboration with us uh kind of give you options and stuff and give us advice because it is very new for us sorry um, if that drinks anyone by the way drinking a beer are you having what is it it's a local beer the xpa yeah yeah i haven't tried this yet nice but I've, don't, I've just got my balconers don't hate on us <laughs> we're, I don't hate on drinkers. you i'm drinking yeah. i'm drinking whiskey <laughs> i'm drinking whiskey just you can hate on curly i don't care hey we've done uh, already done a review tonight yeah it's true a bit like i have one or two glasses of whiskey 
a night when we review. I don't really drink whiskey yeah. for the week. Um, but yeah. Yeah, we try and limit it a little bit because we do get your, you do get your palates blown out, especially if you're drinking the same type. Uh, if you're like a bourbon person drinking bourbon all the time, you're going to get like, your palate's going to get a little bit, I don't know, just kind of blown out. You can't really, you get the same notes every time. Well, I mean, I was uh, good and we've definitely experienced that. My, I was good when all my whiskey was here, but now it's all at mm. your place. Yeah. It's so a, I only have the, one collection. or two whiskeys a week that I buy for a review when we're in lockdown. I don't even buy whiskey for home. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm not. And, we're, and when, lockdown. yeah, without lockdown, yeah. we buy them, take so, them to mine, yeah. review them, and you leave them on the shelf. That's it. I don't, yeah. Uh, yeah I just so drink like, like a few beers for the week. That's all I drink. So that's good, though. That's why we have a better collection now because we're not really drinking it. It's exactly, just yeah. like it's one night a week we actually have our collection to drink from yeah um but yeah so what else do we want to do that we want to change that room as well i think we need to put soundproofing more shelves actual microphones. shelving is shelving is a massive issue <laughs> yeah. if you've seen any of our later ones you're seeing that they're getting a little bit packed up we um we definitely need to add one big one below like on another lower shelf and then like two more little ones on the left and right i, I think reckon we're gonna have plan. to run them up those side walls as well that the camera can't even see we're gonna have to start <laughs> running them up the walls because we have uh, so much whiskey or we like layer the shelves like every shelf has like a second the definitely like two layer four them. behind it or something so it's, yeah. it's layering looks better and it saves us money and room mm. uh, so we'll definitely layer them they're layered now already um we just don't have anything holding propping up the back ones we need yeah, to put some some other true. kind of like bit of wood and stuff to kind of stagger them in different heights to make it look a bit better um i reckon lapel mics and the lighting well. lapel mics we got a shotgun mic and it was like not an inexpensive one i think like, you know what the problem is i think i think it's because we don't have you know how youtubers have those soundproofing the black like foam things that stick to the walls I don't think it's just that. I think it's just the wrong mic. I just don't think we uh, did our research well enough. But I think the soundproofing is one thing that definitely does have an effect because it's it's not like a big open room, but it's a decent regular size room. Um, but the back wall is Glass, mirrored yeah. wardrobes. Mirror, yeah. um, and we always forget to open one of them, like slide them so they're both there instead of having them both open and because it does cause a lot of reverb. We need to kind of have one of them always open, but also get some soundproofing. Maybe the back of the door uh, and either side of us. Mm. Um, or we just fill Closing the... that blind has helped a little bit as well. <laughs> we should just fill the uh, room with empty whiskey boxes that act the same as the... Well, all the empty beer cans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Ooh>. Yeah. <laughs> get, um, yeah, just use the... Um, what would be sick if you've seen the whiskey tribes um some of their videos on their back wall they've got like all their staves and it's from barrels but they're yeah. like staves that have been taken apart and they've layered them and it's like creates a sick like textured like background mm. but that would cost a decent amount because like they're not old crap staves uh from crap barrels they're like Good decent stave. condition yeah, yeah. you know barrels and the one i bought was like i got as a gift was like i'm pretty sure like over it was like 500 bucks so <laughs> i don't know but it would be nice um i kind of want to get a little neon sign for the back as well i reckon Not that even could neon. look cool neon's kind of i don't know if neon i know just the, the, they're uh, too expensive the as well actually in. i don't know if neon and whiskey goes together like what they have on that like wooden stable wall with that wooden logo that looks sick yeah well just just some sort of a uh, little logo in the middle i reckon would look good yeah um but yeah, and I also want a different camera lens. I don't like our camera lens. It's too tight. I need something that's a bit wider because- Wider? Yeah, so we need it a bit like further back because we've got the shelving and I want to show off as much of the shelving as possible so it fits the screen properly. I keep hitting my mic. But also I want to get the barrel in as well. And it's like, there's like a kind of, gap yeah, where yeah, there's a the space other. where it has yeah. to be that it can get like a little bit of both but you can't get enough of both it has to be one or the other kind of thing yeah um and it doesn't look as good it looks a little tight uh, it'd be nice to like move it back a bit but the camera we've got has a really minimal it's a like it's a permanent um permanent lens it's not uh like a 
proper one that you can take on and off and get uh, buy different ones. I think there are some mods I've seen you can do, but I don't know. We we'll might end up just getting better an actual camera. better camera. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably about time for that as well. Anyway, yeah. um, once you get your new PC to be doing some more, some better editing. I want to move out before I get a PC. To be honest, yeah. I need to move well, out. We need to move out together. That would help the channel just a lot. It'd be make it so much easier for us. Yeah. Especially um, during this turbulent time. Especially with COVID. with COVID. Like, it literally wouldn't change anything. We yeah. could still review stuff. Just get alcohol delivered and then good to go. Um, <laughs> we'll probably need to put a lock on a, yeah. a timed lock that opens once every, you know, six days. Make a literal make sure vault. That we don't, <laughs> yeah, literal <laughs> vault. It's timed. Um, just so we don't, like, eat away at our um, collection. At our, at our collection when it's uh, quarantined. But I think we'd be fine um but yeah no that is we've got a lot of plans but it's a lot of depending on how things go kind of thing yeah uh so we'll see speaking of whiskey, um, i have an 800 hundred dollar bottle of strathyla mm -hmm. that i bought for 100 bucks on my old boss sitting here yeah that my dad wants to drink because he wants a whiskey but he wants it but it's he doesn't realize <laughs> But he, because he remembers when I had like 20 or 30 whiskey sitting down here. Mm. Now they're just not here. They're at Sam. Yeah. So he's like, so he, he's he like, comes in, he's like, I want a whiskey. It's like, I only have one bottle and it's $800 and I'm yeah. not opening it for you. Not opening it now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. We so need to grab, grab, show it up. Grab the bottle. Show the camera. It's basically just the Strathyla. I think the 10 or the 12, whatever. But it's uh, a really old bottling. Um, and it's worth a bit more. Yeah. So it's quite an old bottling. It's worth, I think, over here, like 800. Uh, I don't even know if we'll review it for... It won't be for a while, I wouldn't say. It's just an, because... Yeah, 1980s bottling, apparently. There's just not really a whole lot of point. Like, it'll taste different, but it's not going to taste that different. I reckon um, we do it's gonna it It'll be for... very minimal. You'll do it some, for some sort of, like, a... Milestone. Milestone or something, like yeah. Like, one or ten Um... If we start yeah. blowing up, I'm not doing it for one go. <laughs> if, if, if we start taking like, it off, it's like, no. <laughs> nah, I feel like one K is a good milestone. Um, but we'll see how we go. Yeah. But uh, I'd like to compare it to the current bottling of Strathyla 12. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've got that. What is another thing? Um, the Mountain Gin. Uh, or Mount, not Mountain Gin, just Mountain Distillery. Yes, another local. We've pre-ordered that. It's literally what 10 k's away from me this distillery mm, mount um, macedon mount macedon yes they do really nice gins like their gins are starting to become like world renowned now because they're so nice using australian botanicals mm. um and they've decided to do a whiskey well it's probably not decided to they've probably been aging it for a couple of years it just least. yeah exactly but it's coming out this november 200 You've bucks pre-ordered it for 700 mil which is pretty good for for Australia, a small we've, distillery we've, as well. We've ranted a little bit, especially for their first bottling of the whisk, their yeah, first whiskey. Um, but we've ranted a little bit, um, not like with distaste for Australian like pricing, but it's just like it's more. It's a landscape that makes it a little bit harder to delve into because they do sell that they are very small batch, very boutique, uh, small bottlings, high prices. Uh, yeah. so it's a little bit harder to get into it. So seeing one like 200 isn't cheap, but considering some of the other ones out there, like Baker uh, Hills, it is pretty 500 good. 500 mil bottles for 250 plus. Yeah. Which is like we own, I mean, we did own Three all of them, them, but now they've released like five more. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, I don't want to run. We out need to go back to them, them because <laughs> we, we got a, we got called out by someone when we reviewed one of them. He didn't like, uh, review of them because he enjoyed it um I mean, and it's fair enough everyone has different tastes. that's fine i know but he got very he got very um emotional about it saying it was the worst review he'd ever seen and it's just like they're just yeah. opinion it's like saying that someone's opinion on you know apple pie is wrong or on baked salmon is wrong it's like it's still some, some people like things some people don't it's a completely subjective you know opinion but we did so. appreciate it like we appreciate all comments. we need to go back to it i think is it's a bit thing. more yeah like yeah our point of view is that like we're obviously not correct in all the notes we give it's impossible you can't no. always be 100 percent correct we can't be correct at all like if we hate a whiskey yep. it doesn't mean that people everyone hates it it means just our taste buds don't 
suit that whiskey yeah. or the whiskey doesn't suit it's our same, taste buds. It's same with movies and stuff. Some people hate Adam Sandler and some people love Adam Sandler mm. and stuff like that. Like it's just, there's no right or wrong. It's just whether you like it or not. So totally get it. Uh, we didn't like the Bakery Hills, uh, but that guy did. And I that's great because he them. didn't waste his money. Uh, I wish we felt the same. Um, we are going to go back to them to retry them. It's been a while. And I also want to buy some more of their new stuff to see how it's progressed. We'll need to take out um, a house mortgage for it, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll need to take out a couple of loans. Um, what are we talking about? The um, the mountain? Yeah, anyway. So basically it's pretty good pricing for a first release um, from a distillery that is in Australia, uh, yeah. and especially kind of a remote-ish uh, one. Mount Masson isn't like a massive uh, place close I'll to a city or anything. pull up all the information like on the screen like yeah you'll see it while we talk you it. edit it in yeah yeah um it sounds interesting i kind of want to look it up now though to talk about what it actually the description i think it is using all australian pine all australian like ingredients and i'm pretty sure it had peat in it which i'm not sure where the peat's coming from considering they're using all australian ingredients because mountain just type in mountain. It's called red gum. They're using red gum barrels, I'm pretty sure. Which is like a first ever. Mountain Fruit. red gum sim single malt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, herbaceous, spicy, smoked nose, or if it's a caramel, burnt wood, hedge grow. Hedge, hedge row. Peat comes through as well on the palate. Yeah. Uh, prunes, Christmas spice. It sounds good. Uh, their gin, if their gin's anything to go off, um, hey, gin's amazing. then, <laughs> to be then honest. it's going to be, then it should be good. Yeah. Uh, but you never know. Gin and whiskey are very different and you never know. Uh, apparently it's been awarded gold and 95 points at the international whiskey something, something IWSC 2021, uh, awards. We've said it before some people, and that's a, another kind of slightly negative comment we've gotten at some point a while ago was just like they were like what are you talking about this is amazing whiskey how can you say something's bad when it got rated you know double gold or double silver or oh, something that well, was john was samson like, i remember that comment <laughs> and it's like well, one we didn't say the whiskey yeah. was bad at all we just said it was fine but it's not the best especially for the price it's it's not bad um, but <laughs> 30 bucks they give these, they, yeah they give these awards to like the most palatable things it's not like and where what we look for again it's just all subjective what we look for isn't something that's going to be just butter smooth and just the most relaxed kind of experience we want something that's like oh what the hell that's so like we want interesting stuff and uh, a little bit of fight and stuff like that yeah we like high proof we like isla we like you know all that kind of stuff so it's for us that's not like our flavor profile that's really going to wow us that's totally fine that it won gold but it doesn't mean that it's going to be good for everyone um but it's probably like so, a good selling point because it's not even released yet well week. that's why they put it on yeah, there. exactly so that's, it's like that's we have one award a, so it's a selling point if they weren't if there was no award given no one if it was just something people did and they couldn't market with it um then people wouldn't enter it it's all just for marketing uh and i've got nothing against it i just don't want to go off it but there are i know a lot of people uh that go with uh red wine uh, that way they'll walk through the store and they'll find the ones with all the little gold stickers on them and stuff. Yeah. And that's fine. It's literally fine. I've done that before <laughs> many times with wine. Um, but it's not always indicative of whether you're personally going to enjoy it or not. The bottle's so, apparently really, uh, Pat, bottle looks dope as well. Bottle looks cool. It's like Again, a, Keila put it up on the screen, but it's yeah. uh it's like a decantery kind of uh, mm. symmetrical style with the, it looks like a metal, or plastic stopper on the top or something like that yeah. it's it's unique i like it um yeah no i like it it's cool uh so i'm excited about that <sighs> what's another one we've been looking forward to having but also There's like the mount the mountains also like they're not a one-off they have built up a reputation through their gin so people are going to yeah. buy it through their gin because they've released i think there's like four gins but i've only had two and they're both amazing. <laughs> they are Very both good. so good. So I'm drinking Balconas, by the way. Yeah. So based off that, I reckon they're going to be fairly successful, at least in Victoria, because everywhere yeah. in Victoria knows them. They're nice as. Um, yeah. 
And then I would imagine Australia is probably going to like grow. Hopefully that takes off and they produce more whiskies because I want more well, Victorian distillers especially. Um, Australians like kind of view on uh, what's the word like boutique homemade not homemade but like artisanal like kind of like that you know really like small um kind of batch um distilling and brewing and stuff is very much like part of the australian zeitgeist it's like very popular everyone likes everyone likes to home brew there's all these gins in australia that are like quite small but they sell like like four pillars is one like globally mm. you know awards again we've said awards don't mean much but they, they mean something but it just depends to who um they've won a lot of like you know best whiskey in the world's um multiple times and they're where were they from sydney or something yeah they're sydney new south wales yeah, yeah. so like it's there are you walk in the dance and there is like oh like 200 different gins and they're all australian you know, like the, so if that happens the same with all these gin distilleries uh, planning on making their own whiskey and they have them sit there for a while and they're just selling gin until the whiskey's ready kind of mentality, mm. um, we could be seeing a, an influx of quite a bit of uh, whiskey, which one is very good, but two <laughs> makes me nervous because I reckon it'll mean that we will have missed a good opportunity to get in early kind of thing when we finally get to doing it. Um, I don't I can, think it'll be that negative, years but off it. anyway, <laughs> and we're a couple of decades off <laughs> That's some to be able to oh, positive. We're not going to be able to like sell large scale whiskey in, for a, a while. Yeah. You know? Not we'll large scale. <laughs> the cost of the license and then to build a distillery and stuff is like, you know, it's more than uh, putting down a mortgage on a house. Uh, yeah. So it'll take a while, but. Either way, it'll be interesting for everyone involved. Hopefully, people can get. Uh, I think Starwood's the only one that anyone internationally can really access at this and point. Lark. Is Lark really? Is Lark gotten that point as well? I think. I think it's still expensive, but it is international. Yeah, well, I did hear that. Like, um, in Texas or something, someone got hold of a Starwood, but they're like selling it for ridiculous prices. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of which kind of sucks, but it's not like we haven't experienced that ourselves. Where Australia, our liquor import uh, laws are insanely high. The amount of tax we pay on liquor is crazy. So we definitely pay way more than uh, we should for basically all liquor. Uh, I mean, so we we feel the pain. We hear stories of people in America buying bourbons for like ten dollars or twenty equivalent yeah. over here, and we spend. 200 on a local whiskey yeah it's i don't yeah it's true <laughs> australia's just like fuck you we're fucking we're charging full price getting our money back yeah yeah it doesn't translate the way you would think yeah it's just kind of like liquor overall yeah is expensive here <laughs> no matter where it comes from whether you're 10 meters down the, from the distillery or you mm. know it's across the other side of the world you're gonna pay i know it's not like um, it's probably not feasible but i i want to try and set our whiskey as low in cost as possible just mm. to like grow the reputation reputation of the brand and then maybe bump it up a touch i wouldn't because go we want to make something that's like immediately like our plan is to make like have some things where they're basically just simple single malts uh very you know traditional well not traditional there is no such thing as traditional australian whiskey i guess that's too new but like a, a very normal style of single malt um and just kind of have it at a lower proof maybe like 43 46 and make it not nothing too challenging and have that in as large a scale as possible and like but something that's really nice and and like palatable but something that's easy something it doesn't uh like whiskey connoisseurs will be able to appreciate it, but it's not going to like give them the same wow that we're looking for as well. But something that a lot of people can enjoy and get a reputation of just like consistently reliably good, you know, just good whiskey. You know? good and stuff. then in the background yeah. have some more interesting stuff that we really like pour our heart and soul into just like stuff we've wanted to try forever and have that for like the whiskey connoisseurs and stuff. But we want to be able to get it to everyone, get it to, if we've got subscribers in places that have been sticking around for a while and want to try it, we want to be able to actually get it to them. Cause mm -hmm. like we see what whiskey tribe and whiskey vaults done. Um, we take a lot of inspiration from them because 
they're doing they're living out our bloody dream We'd, we've always wanted to do that and they're, they're doing it well but even they're struggling a lot to be able to get their whiskey do we have like, the same across their country i suppose we don't have the no same I, we've laws. got we've got better export laws than them it's easier yeah. i think texas has got some issues with that like you can't get whiskey delivered and stuff like that there mm. or something like that so but still like it, it, um it, there's definitely going to be to be a success this this is a completely different topic now it's like talking about how to be a successful business and not just they were talking all idealistically not uh realistically how things will go there's no we don't know if we event when we eventually do do this uh business wise it won't be for quite a long time but when we do it'll you know still be like we don't know if it'll actually work we're gonna try but there's a lot of different things that go into creating successful business so we'll see how it goes i just got my covid test result back i'm negative (laughs) i got a COVID test. well done (laughs) when did you get it this morning well done you know COVID-19 probably, virus oh, no, was not well. detected oh yeah is that the second time you've had it the third time I've, I've been negative every time but i've only gotten tested once yeah um but you're still working out and about because yeah, you're both my jobs are essential. essential yeah yes well essential they've been labeled essential I mean, support Although work I guess, is essential, and then yeah, at a liquor store. <laughs> and then a liquor store is. Just, I mean, an for two whiskey thing, people, yeah. but yeah, for two whiskey people like us, we're probably glad. Yeah, that that's essential. Um, that looks really bad. Yeah, that burn on my chin. <laughs> yeah, Kelly ate a, had some homemade pizza, and he dropped a bit of molten cheese on his chin. A bit of bock and genie on the chin. It looks a molten it bock. Looks really bad, actually. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> like a, looks like you're prepubescent. Yeah, looks like I'm 13 pimple. with the zits again. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, that's good. At least you don't have COVID. I wonder, that's another thing. Like, I, we don't know if this current this current lockdown, it is the 25th today? 25th? Yeah. Yeah, it's so, yeah. Tw- 25th of July. Um, I don't know when this will go up. This coming know. Friday, I imagine. So Friday. Probably so Probably next yeah. month. Hang on. Mm-hmm. Let's just check. When will it be coming up? The thirtieth. Yeah. So five days from now, um, it'll come out. The quarantine, uh, the lockdown, is meant to end this Tuesday in two days. Um, but the, it may get extended. <laughs> it may not. We don't really know. Um, it was so to end all this is gonna. Last Tuesday. It was meant to. Yeah, it was meant to be five days. Then they added seven days. So we're 12 uh, but, days in, and by the end of it, it might end up being 19. We don't know. I mean, Sydney's the, um, kind of fucked, to be honest. Sydney's Sydney's, Sydney's like we were last Sydney. year. Yeah. yeah, so if you're familiar with like Australia's current situation with um, COVID, it's been very well handled, depending on who you talk to. Not well, It depends if you own a business or not. Like financially it's not been great for a lot of people health wise has been numbers wise if you're talking just strict we're not going to get political but strict numbers wise uh they've been very good uh with lots of but they've been also very strict uh and victoria had a big old kick in the ass with uh numbers last year uh which is still quite was still quite minimal in the grand scheme of things looking at other countries Um, and it was like everyone was going why you locked down yeah (laughs) Yeah, I know. Yeah, Everyone exactly. was getting like 5, 10k <laughs> in it. Um, I think America and stuff and India and Brazil were getting like like 300,000. India and Brazil insane. are still getting that much. Yeah. Like, anyway, we should probably not talk about the C word because I think it's, uh, it's not helpful uh, with the YouTube algorithm when you talk about it for some reason. I don't know. Oh, no. <clears> 494 bought- subs weren't. <laughs> <laughs> and that's being generous yeah. if you expect all of them to watch it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, I'm expecting 10 minutes. Anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, yeah, so, but apparently Sydney's having a bit of a struggle getting those numbers down. Yeah. Uh, we seem to be on top of it, but we're still getting cases a day, just not many. They're uh, all in lockdown, though. Just They're all in quarantine, all 11. They're today, local, right? but they're all linked. And yeah, we had 11 we today and they were cases. all in quarantine. So like we had yeah. basically none, theoretically. I think they totally could open up. It's just 
depending how scared the government's going to be on the new Delta strain. Because good old Danny like was like, like, even if we do open Tuesday, it's going to be with restrictions either way. So, well, it's all we would be wearing masks for like a year and yeah, a half. Yeah, but I imagine it's going to be like ten people in the house or something like that. That those yeah, kinds of restrictions. That's fine though, as long as people can still go to. Well, as long as they let us in bars again and stuff like that, because I feel like... I'm Australian! No, I want to <laughs> drink! That's not even, like, because of that. I'm talking, yeah. like, my empathy for the people that own, like, bars and stuff. Like, they... You know, it's a business. They've got to run. Mm. Even if they have to have capacity numbers and stuff, that's fine, but they yeah. still got to run. Um, and outside is kind of sucky, because uh, a lot of places... What? <laughs> I showed up someone yelled it. Continue. It's fine. Um, a lot of places have, um, you know, outdoor seating, but it's the middle of winter here. So if you've got yeah. like ten percent of your uh, capacity inside and ninety percent outside, it's kind of not great. Anyway, we'll talk less about uh, the Very nasty good. virus uh, and and get onto more whiskey-based stuff. And want to get political or anything? Um, but yeah, that's kind of issues that we've been going through lately. Very. Uh, small compared to a lot of the other countries, but it's still, it's been putting a, a small spanner in the works. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I wanted to, it's not a much. A small like, spanner? It's a huge fuck Compared spanner. to the rest of the world. Oh, in the rest compared of the world. Yeah, yeah. world. I thought you were talking about worldwide. It's a huge fuck up. For oh yeah, no. Worldwide, not a spanner. But um, here, I'm saying it's a small spanner, but compared to the rest of the world, uh, so don't want to complain too much. We're looking pretty good. Yeah. Um, so we'll get off that topic, but um, yeah, I want to ask you, we're going to, I want to give some uh, kind of like assessments on where we are at this point in the year on what was like the best whiskeys we've had so far. So far. So we're talking, so we're talking like overall your num your favorite you've had. Just this year, not like favorite whiskey ever. We've had like so one many whiskeys this year. I know. We did um, two a week and it's July. We've had like just, just open whiskeys. Up, open up our channel and you can refresh your memory. Um, Actually, I know. I I know at least one. Yeah. Tell us. I know a couple. Yeah, that I was gonna say that for you. Yeah. yeah, that didn't impress me the same way it impressed you. I loved it, but it was not like mind blowing the same way. Like you really, re it really like struck home with you. Yeah um noah's mill noah's mill was damn good um that's probably one of my favorite bourbons yeah um i reckon one of my favorite overall whiskeys was probably the uh the the balcona's uh single malt the number one wait that was um, this that was one. yeah yeah that was really good i loved that yeah. um some of the we didn't really get many Ardbeg releases this year, did we? And we got the drum, which was okay, but it was fine, but it was overpriced. Um, and yeah. then we got the, what was it? Oh, the Wee Beastie came out. That was last um, year, wasn't it? That was ages ago. Was it? I don't even remember. I. This year <laughs> and last year have, blend, yeah. have blended <laughs> into this just big glob of nuttiness. I was looking at the um, channel before and I was like, fuck, we've been doing this for a year and a half. Yeah, <laughs> I, it was like, fit, I was like, what? I don't feel like it. Yeah, I know it has. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. one ninety five. You say? Yeah. Getting close to that two hundred. We're getting there. It's taken a while, but we're getting there. I'm just trying to run through what the kind yeah, of uh, what the whiskeys that we've had. Um, that Hudson was weird. Hudson was wild. The one we did recently. That one was that was very interesting. Yeah. I didn't hate it, but it was like, it was strange. Odd. Tealy Black uh, Pitch was quite nice, but I don't know if I'd buy it yeah, again. Yeah, it didn't blow me away. I'd buy it again, but not like in a hurry. Yeah. It's not going to run out anytime soon. Um, really oh. liked, yeah, the Texas Single Melt. The Tealy 14 um, Brabazon. The Brabazon was cool, yeah. Oh, that, I liked really that a lot. Nice. We've That's probably my favorite that, yeah. Irish of the year, definitely. Oh, yeah. Um, we got the Kentucky Spirit this year. Wild Turkey, that was that was damn good. Um, Octomore 10.1. That was a another kick in the ass as usual for Octomore. That was really interesting. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of nice whiskeys. The Maker's <laughs> Mark Private Select was a big surprise. Um, that I was didn't really like interesting. that that much, to be honest. I liked it because the, there was such an intense flavor. That's I why did I enjoy it quite it a bit. It was so wood heavy. That's why I didn't like it. Mm. 
Like Booker's yeah, is wood I, heavy, I but it. there's a lot of flavor to back it. Makers was more. I reckon it was heavy. The, I reckon Booker's was easier. I reckon it was less wood spice and no, that's wood that's what I'm saying. More that's sweetness. What, that's what I'm saying. I like Booker's more, mm. but Makers yeah. is wood heavy. It's like dry cherry mm. with no sweetness. It's just like it sucks all the moisture out of your mouth. The I'm just reading. I'm just reading it. it. Says Makers Mark Private Select, and it says in brackets Shakers 2019. Is that a spelling mistake, or is that the name of their like? No, that was the thing. It was actually the name of their yeah. little like mix up of different types of staves. I wouldn't and put stuff. it. I wouldn't I put it in really brackets <laughs> if it was a spelling mistake. Oh yeah, let me just correct know. my own correct spelling. <laughs> uh, just highlight your incorrect spelling. What it's else? Are incorrect is in brackets. <laughs> um, the Hibiki Harmony we got to try, just the base level one, was pretty nice. I saw that at um uh, Gisborne Sally's. Yeah. Guess how much do you pay for? One fifty? Was it one fifty? One fifty is normally what? Two fifty? Two hundred? Two? I have no idea. I it don't was, know. It was one seventy at Gizzy. Yeah, so that was definitely more than I paid. I think I'd paid you paid one fifty. I think for the private Makers, select, yeah. And I think I paid maybe one thirty for the Hibiki. Yeah, we spent like four hundred. Which, considering that. the landscape of a uh, of a uh, Japanese whiskey right now, is pretty good. Mm. What else? Anything stuck out? Man, we did Bakery Hill this year. Some of them, I'm like, oh, I didn't realize they were so recent. And then other ones... Bakery like, Hill this year. the hell? I thought we did them last Surely year. Surely that wasn't this year. Oh, wait. Bakery Hill. Sorry, no. That's... I'm looking at, like, months. It wasn't 12 months ago. We're talking this year still. So yeah. <laughs> I was going to say... Yeah. But... Um, I'm still surprised that, like, all the ones we did... Oh, Christmas. Yeah, we got our Christmas list and stuff like that. We tried a fair few. We've got a lot. I think if I'm t- saying my favorite out of all of them is going to be the Belconas number one uh, single malt. Uh, favorite scotch is going to be the either the Octomore or what else did i really like yeah it's one that america, i really like for american i'd go balconers for scotch i'd go talisker because the optimal wasn't as nice as the i think it was the 8.1 the 7.1 i think 7.1 that was like 203 peat parts per million whereas the 10 is only mm. like 80 it's like we haven't done a lot of scotches lately we've been doing majority like the bourbon thing and we stuff. drink now we used to only yeah, drink gotten, scotch now we only drink bourbon. we've gotten into bourbon quite a bit yeah um Maybe the, uh, the, what was it called? Where'd it go? I went past it. The Brunner Harbin, I thought was, was really nice. What the? It blew me away, but Strudia or something. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that one was quite nice. I like that a lot. Um, but if I'm going to say the one that's not, uh, that's not Octomore because it's, I'm saying optimal because it blows me away because that's that's the that is what it is. It's a it's designed to just kick your ass. Um, but basic enjoyment, probably the Talisca Distills Edition was definitely right up there. Yeah. Irish the Brabazon, I think, was definitely gonna be the top one. Um said bourbon. Didn't really try much Australian, did we? This year we, we had did like, we did like two. We did 23 hybrid 23rd street hybrid which was was that even this year right yeah four months ago Um, yeah well we had that starwood and over in the old fashion and starwood was definitely the best the starwood oh also rittenhouse rittenhouse was one that really i'm like really really into rittenhouse rye bottled in bond really good quality really nice flavor high corn mash bill rye uh so it's you know bordering that uh transition between high rye bourbon and (coughs) high corn rye Mm -hmm. um are you sure you don't have covid (laughs) um so uh, that one took me by surprise it wasn't just like all pricing and fanciness and stuff that tipped me over the edge because it's not an expensive whiskey it's like 60 bucks yeah um so yeah i think that one's probably gonna sit there um noah's mill was a definite like top 
10 of the year. That's it, I reckon. I, could, I don't reckon I could name anything else that stood out. We've had too so much. many whiskeys, I can't even. That high voltage we just did was wild. It was wasn't nice, but necessarily it wasn't... wasn't necessarily like amazing, but it was like it was very interesting. Mm. It was you know, basically the... cask strength. It's like the monster. only Octomore. Oh, sorry, it's the only Isla that I pulled Octomore notes out of. Yeah, we got the cheesy notes, didn't we? The cheddar blue cheese yeah. style stuff. Mixed with like those really salty briny notes as well. Mm. Um, yeah, which is it's nice, but it's it is also lacking in flavor as well. Yeah. Somehow, I don't um, know how you can have one extreme and then yeah, like no, no. flavor, but it's just yeah, yeah. There was another thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, one of our subscribers, Marion, mentioned uh, mentioned a bit of a, an issue going on with um, Scotland and Canada uh, to do with the way that the Scottish Whiskey Society is basically bullying uh, Canadian distilleries, um, and it's kind of made people stop buying scotches and support Canadian distilleries a bit more. Um, so I wanted to talk about your kind of take on that. My take? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything about it, to be honest. I only yeah. know like Wait. a very... I know like what you've yeah. just said, that they are bullying them. It's like I don't... I haven't yeah. read into it at all. From... For anyone that's... Uh, we're not like... Again, I'm not like super up to date on it, but if I've got a basic understanding is... Uh, I forget the... Um, the distillery in Canada is like Glenn something, Glenn Bennett or something like that. It sounded um, Scott. And, and it sounded Scottish, yeah. um, but it was Canadian. And basically the Scottish Whiskey Association um, just kind of decided to sue the living crap out of them because it sounded Scottish, um, which is ridiculous. Um, and apparently that's become um, not, it's, 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 it's a pattern of behavior um, from multinational you know corporations just kind of like bullying smaller uh, distilleries because scotch is uh, they're claiming anything that sounds scottish is their property is not is a is property of you know distilleries and stuff yeah. anything that happens on scottish shores um so a lot of canadian ones um were have been getting sued because of the names of their distilleries and stuff like that um even though this um Again, I think I'm getting the name wrong, but Glenn Bennett or something, um, or Glenn Barrett, I don't know, uh, had Glenn like Barrett? the colors of the. F <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to not look as young as we actually are on this channel. <laughs> Try and be a bit more mature and adult, and you just throw out cod references. We're 23, well We're getting up there. Oh, yeah. Me and oh, yeah. I can grow a beard. <laughs> I can grow a beard. <laughs> um, I know um anyway uh <laughs> sorry, they had like the maple <laughs> you know they had the, the maple leaf on it and it said canadian whiskey and stuff like that but the name was you know glenn something so they just decided to sue them um and this is definitely a trend with any big multinational corporations where they're gonna just kind of where they bully who they can to help their own uh business their own system um and it's very unfortunate because scotch is such a positive thing when you look at it as a whole uh without any without any uh kind of like poking around it is very positive it's it's a you know got a long lineage um arguably you know the first creators of whiskey you know between you know it's that they could be um and you know it's got so many distilleries with so much heritage and history behind it but then you've got you know these corporations that are just kind of like doing dickish backdoor moves on small distilleries from other countries for no reason. Yeah. Um, and it does put a sour name to scotch in general. Uh, it kind of, it makes it worse for <clears throat> like the, the s distilleries themselves, because people are now, as I said, buying uh, Canadian whiskey and deliberately not buying scotch uh, out of a show of support uh, or a show of, you know, uh, kind of, disagreements in what the Scottish Whiskey Association is doing. So I would like to join in on that. And we did buy a few scotches recently-ish, but we're mostly going to be buying bourbons and we'll try to buy some uh, Canadian whiskey, some what Irish. What Canadian whiskeys can we get? That's a damn good question. <laughs> we only we have Canadian nothing. or Pike. That's the only two. Dude, or no, Crown dude, Royal. We have a Canadian or Pike. <laughs> um, yeah. It's basically the only two. No, 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 no. We can't, we can't get, even get Pike anymore. 
try and find Pike Creek, like the one that we had. Like you might be able to get it online, but not the one we have. Yeah. I know when we reviewed it. Definitely the last year. Barrel. Okay. Yes, yeah, something rather. But like buying that, yeah. Pike Creek is like impossible here now as well. It... So basically, we can get Crown Royal, uh, Canadian Club. What else? That's like literally it. There's like might be one or two more. We there isn't like it's very hard to support Canadian distilleries over here because we just do not get like any of their stuff, mm. uh, and we get a massive amount of uh, scotch. Scotch. And so yeah. we'll try and we'll try and show support by doing bourbons and by doing. Uh, any Canadians we can find and uh, Irish <laughs> and we'll try and do some more local ones. Just coming off the heels um, of saying, we haven't done a scotch recently. We should do more scotches. <laughs> so no, like I said, we haven't ago. done scotch lately. Yeah, but I then said I said, we, we should, then scotch. I was like, we should do more scotches. And you're like, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh well. right. Before we were like, yeah, we've only been doing bourbons. We should do more scotches. Yeah. Uh, that's true. <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyway, if you've got any more thoughts and more information about that subject, do let us know because, uh, again, it's very preliminary, preliminary uh, our understanding. Yeah. Um, I'd like to know what's going on. I will say, though, that the court case against Glenn Bennett, insert whatever the actual name is, curly in editing. <laughs> I'm um, not editing to 50 minutes into a video, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway um they won the case uh against the whiskey scottish whiskey association yeah. so which is good but it doesn't change that they are also doing the same thing against m multiple other distilleries mm. uh that don't have the money to go against uh go in a big long expensive court case uh, so you do let us know more about it because I think it's important to pay attention to these kinds of things, even though it's just whiskey, uh, it's still, uh, there's still politics behind it, um, and still shady stuff goes on. So we want to make it, uh, enjoyable for all. Yeah. Um, yeah. But is there any, anything else you wanted to touch on? We just wanted to give this podcast stuff a try because we just, as I said, we just kind of chat shit anyway, might as well, um, record. I think we've covered everything. We've covered everything. If you do enjoy this, let us know. Because, do, like, yeah, uh, I mean, we, we might as well do long. this. <laughs> yeah. We might as well. We, since get... we do this every week, we might as well record. <laughs> so, record it. And we'd yeah. like to do it in person as well, but it's also very easy and applicable to lockdown situations. Uh, it's a good thing to fall back on. But also, um, on that, if you, if you like this but don't want it to take over the Friday video... I reckon that's fair yeah. enough. We could just chuck this up. Just yeah, sometimes would you, a week or something. I don't know. We're happy to do it as um, something that happens instead of the Friday every so often, or we can do it as like a weekly or fortnightly thing yeah. uh, to be in addition. So four uploads every two weeks, kind of thing. Or, and then so it's... three uploads a week, but four uploads every second week. And then when we actually start getting some traction on the channel, we should make it like a. Sp like put it on Spotify and all that kind of stuff as well. I'm more if we like interested bothered. in just getting people like in yeah. on it to ask us questions and stuff to reply to people. Oh, you want to but, do it live yeah. and all that kind of stuff? Oh, I reckon if it's that, well, if, if it get, turns out positive that people actually want to watch it and yeah. uh, I'd like to make it so people are actually part of it instead of it just being kind of like a long YouTube video. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, we totally understand that this isn't, this is long. So it's not going to be the kind of thing people are going to watch all of or much of but if it's something that you still like to throw on and enjoyed any amount of it uh and you'd want to see any more let us know if not totally fine totally get it i'm not like a massive long video person on youtube myself so i would understand uh we'll just focus our energy more on our other stuff but i thought we'd give it a try it's locked down so why not mm -hmm. um but yeah so thank you very much for watching this and i said episode Podcast. of everything this geek this uh, podcast one of everything whiskey. Uh, if you liked it, leave us a like, leave us a comment. Um, if you want to see more from us, uh, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.